Greetings. It's a beautiful day here in Chatwin. Sun is shining and spring and summer is in the air and we are excited about it. Though yesterday in Tumalo Ridge, I went in to plant some potatoes and ended up with five inches of snow. But today is practically all gone and I look forward to having some great potatoes. It's always a pleasure uh, to greet you in the name of Jesus and to share the word. And uh, I trust today that your heart will be blessed. I want to talk for a few moments on the subject finding our sustenance in Jesus Christ. And I want to read to you from Matthew chapter 5. Maybe these verses are familiar. It's called the Beatitudes. And Jesus is speaking and says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth Blessed are those who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. And blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you who people insult you when they persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. What does it really mean when I say finding our sustenance in Jesus Christ? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I just read recently this quote, and I'd like to share it with you. The church has lost its spiritual desire and passion for spiritual growth. Not sure if you agree with that, I'm just quoting here. And it goes on to say that in addition to the loss of desire and passion, we have also lost our capacity for spiritual growth. We are so caught up with the white noise all around us that there is no room for anything else, and thus many Christians remain hungry and thirsty, unquote. I want to quote to you William Barclay, great theologian of the past. And William Barclay is talking about words. And, and he says this, words do not exist in isolation. They exist against a background of experience and thought. And the meaning of any word is conditioned by the background of the person who speaks it, unquote. It's important that I say that because it certainly ties in with what's going to follow here. You see, hunger and thirst and being thirsty for righteousness is painted against the background of physical hunger and thirst to the point of death. Question. Have you ever been hungry enough or thirsty enough that you would eat almost anything or drink almost anything to give you sustenance and strength so you could get through the day and face tomorrow? Maybe few of you, including myself, have ever been to the point where we have been hungry enough or thirsty enough to eat or drink anything. But when Jesus is talking about being hungry and being thirsty, it's against a background that the folk at that time would have easily understood. You see, in the days of Jesus, and even in parts of the world today, a working man's wages would be only pennies a day. A working man in Palestine could afford meat, for instance, maybe once a week. 
And in reality, the working man and the day laborer and their families were never far from the borderline of real and actual starvation. So when Jesus uses the word hungry, folk can immediately identify with it. Thirst also is presented from the background of what happened in the day of Palestine or in that particular day. You see, people could not turn on a tap and access pure, clean water as you and I can do today. Often, water would be unclean because of parasites, for instance, or blowing sand that would uh, choke any flowing small streams, springs, or even small reservoirs. And so hungry and thirsty, against that background, Jesus said, blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, for they will be filled. So they can, they can identify with hunger, they can identify with being thirsty, but what does that have to do with righteousness and sustenance in Jesus Christ? You see, the Amplified Version puts it this way. I just love what it says. Blessed and fortunate and happy and spiritually prosperous are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And then way back in the Old Testament, Isaiah made this statement. He said, is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. Even if you have no money, come, take your choice of wine or milk, for it's all free. He goes on to say, why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does you no good? Listen to me, and you will eat what is good. You will eat the finest food. And so God is inviting us to Him for spiritual sustenance, spiritually to be engaged with God through the Son. You see, our passion, our desire, and our capacity for righteousness and uprightness and a right standing with God must be enlarged. And the daily cry of the human heart is to be filled to capacity, knowing God. David had it right when he said, My soul thirsts for God. My soul thirsts for the living God. And again in Psalm 63 and 1, O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly, I will seek you. My soul, again that word, thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. And, and so the psalmist, the desire of his heart is to find his sustenance in God the Father. He goes on to say in the Amplified Version, O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you. My inner self thirsts for you. My flesh longs and is faint for you in a dry and weary land where no water is. And so when Jesus raises the issue of being hungry and being thirsty for God or for righteousness, it is not a new concept because the people in the Old Testament are certainly engaged in this hungering and thirsting for God. People who hunger and thirst for God will desire it and will go after it just as a thirsty person goes for water or a hungry individual goes for food. You see, when we come into a relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, we are then covered with the righteousness of God. 
but we don't become stuck. We don't become saved and make no progress. The desire of our heart and the capacity of our being should always be to get to know more and more of God. Paul put it very good in Philippians 3 and 9 when he made this statement. He said, I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. You see, ladies and gentlemen, folks and friends, to be clothed with the righteousness of Christ is to be placed, it's important that you get this now, to be clothed with the righteousness of Christ is to be placed in an upright standing with God. But we are still vulnerable to the attacks of Satan, and we are vulnerable to all of the worldly influences, and thus we crave, we crave to live the life that matches the declaration that we are clothed with His righteousness. Amen. And we become more and more like Jesus, as we delve into the Word and as we meditate in prayer. I love what Paul had to say about hungering and thirsting, though he doesn't use the word. The implications are certainly there. In Philippians 3 and 10, he said, and I quote, I want to know Christ. Paul is writing this while in a Roman prison facing death. And after many years of ministry, this is the cry of his heart. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. There is that insatiable hungering and thirsting for the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, that your prayer and my prayer and the desire of our hearts would be, I want to know Christ and experience the power that raised him from the dead. And then Paul goes on to say, but I press on. While my desire is to be clothed with righteousness and have my hunger and thirst satisfied, in the meantime, he's saying, I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed for me. What a beautiful illustration for the church today. Have we lost our capacity for righteousness? Absolutely not. God can equip us daily. Are we really thirsty for God? Are we really hungry for God? Can we identify with David when he said, My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. He knew what it was to hunger. He knew what it was to thirst. He knew what it was to reach beyond his own boundaries and find sustenance and protection and wealth in God. Blessed are those who hungry, who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness for they will be filled. Ladies and gentlemen, our spiritual sustenance is found in Jesus Christ. Hunger for it, thirst for it, and you will receive it from God. My prayer is keep looking, keep hungering, keep thirsting. Have yourself an awesome day and God's blessing on you. Amen and amen.